Think about his love. Think about his goodness. Think about his grace that's brought us through. For as high as the heavens above, so great is the measure of our Father's love. Great is the measure of our Father's love. Think about His love. Think about his goodness. Think about his grace that's brought us through. For as high as the heavens above, so great is the measure of our Father's love. Great is the measure of our Father's love. Great is the measure of our Father's Heavenly Father, we are so blessed to live in this great nation and to have the opportunity to worship you this Sabbath morning. We pray that you will lead and guide each one of us as we go through our daily activities. We thank you for all the gifts and blessings that you bestow upon us. They're so numerous we cannot count them. We want to remember the sadness that happened in Orlando. We pray that love will overcome hate. We pray for our church, for the past, the present, and the future generations. As we go through this time of transition, we pray that everything will be in accordance with your will. Be in our midst as we continue this service in song and message. Amen. Good morning. I'm glad to be with you today. Today, as we celebrate our earthly fathers, we remember the perfect father our Heavenly Father, God Himself. We're going to sing Him 43, This Is My Father's World, followed by Think About His Love, which the words are printed in your bulletin. Would you stand together as we sing joyously?
Amen. Would you turn and greet someone around you? Tell them you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord today. Again, I say good morning and uh, welcome to First Baptist Church. We want to uh, welcome home family and visitors. And if you're visiting with us, uh, a special welcome. In the bulletin, in the uh, pew pads in front of you, there's a little card that we would love to have a record of your visit. If you could just fill that out and drop it in the offering plate later, we would uh, appreciate that. We want to say welcome to Maria Lester. Uh, you've seen Maria. We, we appreciate it. Uh, you see, there's a little bio in the bulletin about Maria, so uh, you can read that. But if you really want to know her personality, give her a call on the phone when she's not home, and you will hear her answering machine. And it's worth, uh, uh, I don't know what you do about the problem of Maria, but, that's, 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 <laughs> but uh, you, you would enjoy that. You uh, see the bulletin, a lot of announcements there. I don't want to repeat those, uh, but you see them there. Uh, Joanne, I know last week there was a, a mistake about the time. I, is this right in the bulletin? Okay. Okay, so... What you see in the bulletin is correct, and husbands and children and everyone's invited, so uh, please notice that. Uh, other announcements are listed there, and I'll let you read those for yourself, but is there anything that we haven't gotten there? Okay, yes, that's right. Uh, wedding, wedding last night, and uh, I guarantee you he was the youngest uh, person there, so... Uh, uh, a little bitty one there so congratulations to you and and the family so any other announcements well if not we want to say happy father's day to our fathers here and maria i believe is going to lead us in a recognition of our fathers thank you would you find also in your bulletin the words to family it helps if you unmute the mic, doesn't it? <laughs> He's giving me the signal up there. <laughs> you may remain seated as we sing this together. Come and fill our homes with your presence. You alone are worthy of our reverence. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We will serve the Lord. Come and fill our homes with your presence. You alone are worthy of our reverence. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. We Amen. I hope that is your dedication today. Whether your home has one person or many, many, whether there's a father present or not, we desire to have Christian homes who reverence God and who serve the Lord. Amen. I would like to recognize those of you who are here today who are fathers. Would you all please stand? Fathers, please stand wherever you are.
Okay, what an awesome responsibility you have. What a privilege you have. I know it's been a joy for you to be a father, but we remind you today that you have a perfect heavenly father who is your example of unconditional love, who disciplines out of love, a father who loves you and has taught you how to love your children. And so today we want to thank you for all that you do. We know you do everything, so many things that your children don't even realize that you do. You provide for them. You give them love. You give them so much. And today we want to honor you and thank you for that. We also want to pray for you because we know it's hard. We know it's a big responsibility to lead your family, especially to pass on the torch of loving and following Jesus Christ. So would you bow as we pray and bless our fathers today? Lord, we thank you so much for the gift of these wonderful men. Lord, you know everything about them. You know every story. Lord, you have been with them through every moment of life. And today, Lord, we just pray you would give them a special blessing, that you would fill them up with your spirit and that you would give them strength and courage for the awesome responsibility of being a father. Whether their children are young or fully grown, Lord, we always need our fathers the same way we need you, our heavenly father. Lord, would you just fill them up? Would you give them strength and courage? Would you also help them to have joy in their fatherhood? And Lord, those who are not fathers, but maybe stepfathers or who may have a father's role, Lord, would you bless them as well? And Lord, for those who have recently lost a father, or those who have never known their father, Lord, would you come? Would you be father to them? Lord, we just trust you that you know what you're doing. And so I pray that you would um, fill these men, give them joy in serving you and in showing others uh, how to lead their home. We thank you for them. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Okay, the rest of you stand and join your father, all the fathers. We're going to sing an offertory hymn together, 135, Nothing But the Blood. You probably don't even need your hymnal for this, but you might want to open it anyway because we're going to do all four verses, 135, Nothing But the Blood.
God, we are very thankful that we're here this morning. We do pray that that will be with each one of us that are here. And dear God, we do pray that at this time as we take our offering, that we may use it in our need and your need. Be with us as we participate in the service this morning. Open our heart and let the message soak in. For we do ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. prayer list is listed in our bulletin. We certainly uh, want to celebrate with Ashley and Will and the new birth and grandparents and aunts and the whole business. So we, we want to celebrate that. And um, certainly, uh, Gene, we, we continue to lift you and your family up. And you'll notice that the uh, memorial service for Frank is scheduled for July the 9th. Encourage you for that. Others listed are uh, pretty much the same uh, same group, so continue to remember those. Is there anyone else that we need to add to our prayer list and mention today? During prayer time, we will lift these up and uh, also any that are on our hearts. We come now to the time of reading our scripture. And I know when I was looking, I, I was thinking, what do you preach about? when uh, the pastor of the church has just retired and we don't yet have an interim, what do you preach about? Well, I, I decided I would take the advice of an, of an old coach that I once had that said, uh, those of you that have been in athletics, you know the KISS formula, keep it simple, stupid. <laughs> so so it's, a, it's a call for us to keep things simple. And usually followed by that was to go back to the basics. So that's where we're going today. We're going back to the basics. Feel welcome to follow along as we read these two passages of Scripture. First from Deuteronomy 6. Now this is the commandment, the statues, and the ordinances that the Lord your God charged me to teach you to observe in the land you are about to cross into and occupy, so that you and your children and your children's children may fear the Lord your God all the days of your life and keep all his decrees and his commandments that I am commanding you so that, so that your days may be long. Hear, therefore, O Israel, and observe them diligently so that it may go well with you and so that you may multiply greatly in a land flowing with milk and honey as the Lord, the God of your ancestors, has promised. Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might. Keep these words that I am commanding you today in your heart. Recite them to your children and talk about them when you are at home and when you are away, when you lie down and when you rise. Bind them as a sign on your hand. Fix them as an emblem on your forehead and write them on the doorpost of your house and your gates. And then from John 3, words we know well. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son so that everyone who believes in him may not perish but have eternal life. 
Indeed, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. We thank God for this, his word. Let us pray. Almighty Lord, we come before you in adoration and recognizing you as the creator of all that there is. Lord, we praise your name. As we bow before you, we ask that you would be with those that are on our hearts individually who have special prayer needs. Others we have mentioned because of sickness or deteriorating health or loss. Lord, we ask that you touch them and touch those around them in a very special way, lifting them up with only the strength that you can give. Lord, we pray for our church that in this time we may be guided to the person you would have lead us to be our under-shepherd. Lord, help us to be faithful in all that we do, praising your name. We ask that you would be with our nation. Help us, Lord, to look again to you. We ask that you protect all our men and women in our armed services and those here at home who give us protection that we may enjoy the freedom that you have truly given. Lord, help us to always honor your name and praise the name of Jesus, for it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. I'd like to share a song with you this morning that shows you a little bit about my heart. I have a heart for the lost. And it's also a song that has a true story behind it that's about a father and a son, a father passing along his passion for Christ. Um, you may be familiar with Rick Warren. He is the pastor of Saddleback Church and the one who did the Purpose Driven Life and Purpose Driven Church. Um, Rick's father was also a pastor uh, mostly of small churches throughout his life. And when he was um, in the final days of life, he was in a hospital bed, and he kept trying to get out of bed. And I, I don't know if you've ever known anyone who just was wanting to get up, wanting to get up, and they're in the bed. And <coughs> they kept asking him, you know, what are you doing? Where are you trying to go? And he said, i got to reach one more for Jesus. And uh, <coughs> this is the story of him as as his son Rick cried there at his bedside, and he touched him on the head and commissioned him and passed that, on, passed that on to him. Okay, I can't do it anymore. Now you do it. And I believe that's what our church is supposed to be all about, is reaching one more for Jesus. As I looked in my father's eyes, sat by his bed and held his hand, and I said my last goodbyes, he just held on for as long as he could, and I heard him say, Reach one more for Jesus before I close my eyes. I must reach one more for Jesus. I won't let another day go by. That's what I'm living for. To reach one more, one more for Jesus. As I sat by my father's side, I laid down my head upon his bed. And he felt the tears I cried. And he placed his hand upon my head, and I heard him say, reach one more for Jesus before you close your eyes. You 
must reach one more for Jesus. Don't let another day go by. That's what you're living for, to reach one more, one more for Jesus. Jesus, before we close our eyes, oh, 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 reach one more for Jesus. Don't let another day go by. That's what we're living for, to reach one more. We uh, have had a sermon already in music today, and so thank you for that. Let us go to God in a word of prayer. Almighty Lord, as we bow before you, I ask that you would let the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. You are our Lord, our strength, and our Redeemer. Amen. You know me extremely serious person. <laughs> anyway, I, I just want to share something with you. You know, when I preach in the pulpit, I, I always try to wear a nice coat, and it's, it's always a challenge to get a coat that matches the season. And uh, you remember, those of you that know me, know that a few years ago I served at the Presbyterian Church in, as their director of Christian education and filled the pulpit for them on several occasions. Their custom is that their minister preaches in a robe. And so I tried to honor, honor their tradition whenever I was there. And so one Sunday, uh, they asked me to preach, and so I agreed. And um, that morning, I was running a little bit late, so I reached in the closet and got my ministerial, black ministerial robe out of the, ba- out of the closet and in the garment bag and ran out there. And and got there in time to greet everybody, and then I, I go to the office to put it on, and I unzip it and pull it out, and it's Carlene's black evening dress. <laughs> so I had a couple of choices, <laughs> and I decided the suit was good enough. So <laughs> One of the things I, I think as we look at this time while we're waiting for God to lead us to the right person, is that we need to enjoy each other's company. We are gathered in this place because we have a common belief in Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. And uh, that's a thing to bring smiles to our faces. So as as I approach this sermon, you see it's entitled uh, Misplacing God. You know, how can you do that? Well, the first passage from Deuteronomy, you know, that's when Moses had given it to the people uh, before they went into the the promised land. Uh, By the way, those of you that are in Sunday school, there's one or two books that we commonly use in our Sunday school classes. One of them's focused for two or three weeks on Zephaniah, and the other one's focused for several weeks on uh, encounters with Christ, encounters with Jesus. 
And so if you've been in either one of those classes, you've heard part of this sermon. So I just warn you ahead of time. So when it comes to the part you know, you can, you know, shout or something. But Zephaniah was a, was a prophet that uh, prophesied at about in the time of Josiah. And you remember Josiah was the young king, and, and they found the book of Deuteronomy, the law, uh, among the temples. They had lost, they had misplaced the word of God. And, you know, we wonder, how could you do that? How, how could that happen? Well, anyway, when they got it, they started uh, uh, reading the Word of God in hopes that it would renew the people. And so when we look at the Deuteronomy passage, there's some good stuff there. If we want to know as Christians how we should behave, uh, what we should do, what does our church need, what can we do to energize our church, not bad advice here, you know, uh, the Lord is our God, the Lord alone. You know, this, this was a warning that God had made to the people that if you start to turn to anything other than God himself, things would not be good. And so that's a reminder to any church, not just ours, but any church. Make sure that our focus is on God. Now, one thing we have that the people to whom this was written initially have is, is Jesus Christ, God's revelation of salvation in Jesus Christ had not been yet revealed. We are blessed to have that information. So when it says, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your might, that's what we need to be about, remembering that Jesus Christ is the ultimate fulfillment of God's love. It says, keep these words that I'm commanding you, God's words. The commandments that God gave and the commandments and words of Jesus Christ, we need to keep those where? Not on a coffee table where we dust them off, uh, but in our hearts. Keep them with all your heart and keep them with all your soul and with all your might. Make God, the things of God, the first thing. You know, we talk about praying without ceasing. Well, I agree with that, but we got to make sure that uh, it's not like on the text phone and we drive through a red light while we're doing it. That's not literally what that means, but that means that God is a part of your life, is as real to you every minute of every day, 24-7, 365. That's how Christians live. That's how they live. And so that's what this is saying to us. But it's also reminding us, recite them to your children and talk them about them when you're at home and when you're away. But it's more than just rote memory and reciting something. If it's in your heart, it has meaning. It has deep meaning. And that's what we need to do. And then it talks about bind them as a sign on your hand, fix them as an emblem on your forehead and write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. And the Jewish people got in awful trouble because they tried to keep those legalistically. As long as I did that, as long as I did that, I'm covered. No, no. Our faith and our relationship with God is right here. It's in our hearts. It's, it's not something that we have to write down. I, I'm like probably all of us here, I wish we still lived in a time when people wanted, hey, will you bring the Ten Commandments? I want to post them in this public building. Or I want to put them in this school classroom. You know, we probably all wish we still lived in that time, but I want to say to you that posting the Ten Commandments anywhere did never, never made a difference. That's not where they need to be posted. They need to be posted in our hearts. And if we live by what they say, that's what makes a difference. If the world sees us living by the word of God, that's what makes a difference. So when we have these words in uh, Deuteronomy, it's an example of, of making God there all the time. You know, people are in a bad habit. This is an age thing. Anybody know what I mean when I say pigeonhole? 
Yeah, you have to be a certain age, you know. It, I mean, it comes from the word when they used to have carrier pigeons, and each little carrier pigeon has its own little thing. And if you go to the, used to go to the post office, they would pigeonhole the letters. Each letter goes into a certain spot. So even though I'm dating myself, people have a tendency to pigeonhole God. Well, where do I put God? Emergencies only. Sunday morning. That put him in wedding. Maybe a funeral. And we have a, we have a tendency to pigeonhole God. But the passage of Deuteronomy is a reminder, uh-uh, uh-uh. We don't control God. And in real essence, we can't misplace God. Because if we say we misplace God, that seems like we have control over where God is. Ever tried to walk to the ocean and say, stop right there? Doesn't work. You know. uh, God is above all, in all, over all. He's our creator. God created us. We didn't create him. And so we can't really pigeonhole God, nor should we. God should be integrated in our lives. Uh, you ever, ever put a drop of food coloring in a glass of water? It doesn't just stay there. It infuses all of it. And that's what God should do for us. God should be infused in all of our life so that, that we're always worshiping God with everything we do and say and are because we're living a life that emulates, if you will, Jesus Christ. Even though we never can reach that perfection, that's what we're striving for. You want to grow a church? I don't have the answer to that. Obviously, any of you that are anywhere close to the same age I am, and there's a few decades there, um, remember when you'd open the door and let's put some chairs in the aisles. You know, you remember those days. That, that doesn't exist anymore. But churches have an identity. You know, if you want to know what our identity is, ask somebody anywhere in town. You know anything about First Baptist Church? What do they do? And see what the answer is. You know, some churches will say, well, that's where all, or that's where, or they're doing this, or that doing that. We don't have to be like everybody else. What we have to be is a body of gathered believers that are trying very hard to do exactly what Deuteronomy said and love God with all our heart and with all our soul and with all our might and trust in God that he'll show us what we need to do. Now, certainly one of the first things here, recite them to your children and talk about them. Not just tell them, but show them. You know, live a life that demonstrates Jesus Christ. We all know the fact that uh, what, we, what we do overrides what we say. So how we live our lives, that is what shows Jesus Christ. That's what shows God. So if nothing else, if we could ask the community, what's going on at First Baptist? Well, I don't really know, but I know so-and-so is a member, and they love God. I don't know that there's a finer compliment that we could have as Christians that, that they would say that. You know... Too often, we do the same thing with, with Jesus Christ. Too often, we try to pigeonhole Jesus Christ. Uh, who is Jesus? Who is Jesus? Well, let me tell you, it's a faith thing. You know, the very first verse in the Bible, who knows it? In the beginning, God created. Okay, that's a faith statement. I mean, you know, when I was out last night, did you, anybody see the moon and the stars last night? How beautiful, how sharp. And you look up there and you go, how can you not believe in God? How can you not believe in God? I prefer to believe that God created us. We're not some accident, cosmic accident. God's in charge. God created all that there is. And it comes down to faith. You can't prove that. 
Many of you know that I spent my career as a math teacher. And you remember, big thing in math, Paul, you remember this, you know. You got to prove this. And the proof wasn't the book says so, the teacher says so, or any fool can plainly see. Uh, you know, uh, it's a matter of faith. You can't prove God. You can't prove Jesus Christ is, is the, our means to salvation. It's a matter of faith. But as we gather here, and we're Christians, I guarantee you, every Christian has had some type of personal encounter with God through Jesus Christ. Our stories aren't going to be the same. Sometimes it's dramatic. Sometimes it's growing. I grew up in this church, so my, my encounter with Jesus Christ and God was a growing thing. But as I look back, and I've got a long way to look back, but when I look back, it's obvious that in this place, boy, God was at work. Well, each one of us has that story as a Christian. It may not have been a dramatic conversion when you came to know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, but as you look back on your life, can you see the times where God nudged you this way? Because if you'd gone that way, it would not have been a good thing. Or the times that you went that way and God said, and that was a good thing. And the times that it was so bad, it's kind of like the footprints in the sand. You realize God was carrying you through those times. Each one of us has that special one-to-one -one relationship with Jesus Christ. And you know, that's what we need to live. And don't be ashamed to tell people that. Now, those of you who know me know I'm not a soapbox brother turn or burn type preacher. I'm more of come let us reason together. But I think when we have the opportunity with neighbors or with friends or with co-workers, we live a life that brings glory to God, that does nothing. You know, I've known people, and every once in a while I've been that people, where... Oh, I don't want to tell them I'm a Christian because what I have been doing doesn't match up with that label. We don't want to live that kind of life. We want to live a kind of life that when somebody says, you know, you're different. How come? Oh, well, let me tell you. you know, uh, share, share what God is in your heart. You know, as, as we live, if God is in our heart, it's going to come out. It's going to come out. And people will see that. And we'll grow a church. You know, God will lead us where he wants us to go. We just need to be prayerful. We need to be faithful. You know, there's a couple of passages of scripture that are all my all-time favorite. So, Carlene, when it's time to throw me under, use these two passages of scripture. Uh, Romans 8, that nothing can separate us from the love of God. I'm firmly convinced that when we accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, there's nothing in this world that can interrupt that. The other one I like is 1 Corinthians 13, that you hear at weddings all the time. You know, faith, hope, and love abide. Well, that's my only advice for us. If we want to be involved in renewing our church, then let's let each one of us look at that. Now, I, I, want, I like to turn nouns into verbs. You know, I want to say faith, hope, and love. If we want to make God the center of our heart, then we go about faithing. You know, I, I don't have faith. I can put that on the wall. I want to live faith. I want to be a person that lives faith, which means we pray privately, together. We study. We learn what God's word is. We ask God for guidance. We live our faith. And then hope, we live as hoping people. But, you know, a lot of, the world doesn't understand the word hope. The hope, I, I understand hope when I'm playing golf. Oh, I hope that one doesn't go in the pond, you know. That's not the kind of hope we've got. It's a sure promise that God has made that things are going to be all right. But we put our trust in him. You know, the other Sunday school class has been studying encounters with Jesus, about individuals who encountered Jesus. And so that last one is love. 
You know, we're not Jesus, but we're the closest thing some people may see. So we love, like Jesus would love, to have the opportunity to bring them to Jesus so that they can encounter Jesus on their own. No one ever became a Christian by reading the Ten Commandments. Nobody ever became a Christian by hearing the stories of Jesus. Both of them are important. You become a Christian when you accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior for yourself. You know, the old statement, God has no grandchildren, is somewhat right because each one of us is God's child because we accept Jesus Christ as our own personal Lord and Savior. So as a church, what do we do between now and the time that our pastor or interim pastor is here? We keep on having faith and living faithfully and studying faithfully and praying faithfully and even attending together, gathering together as a congregation more faithfully. We keep on hoping, living in the assurance that God is with us, that God will lead us. God hasn't dumped us here and walked away. God didn't misplace us. God knows where we are. God knows what we need. And God wants to lead us. And then live lovingly. Reach out to others because God has loved us. We are to love others. And part of that love is living a life that shares Christ in word and in deed. Let us pray. Lord God, help us to never misplace you. Help us to always put you at the center of everything we are so that our lives exude your love to others. Help us to be faithful, reaching one more. For it's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. We come now to a time of, uh, of invitation, commitment. You know the traditions of this church, that if you have a, a recommitment at, to Christ at this time, it's near a birthday or an anniversary, feel welcome to come. If this is Father's Day and you want, to, as a family, to recommit your lives to Jesus Christ, to make God's word the center of everything, feel welcome to come. And if there's anyone here that God has reached in a special way, and you simply want to say, I want to be, make Jesus Christ my Lord and Savior. We invite you to come as we stand and sing. We thank you, God, for our benediction. You will notice that uh, following the spoken benediction, there will be a choral benediction and an admiration of the Lord. Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty Lord, we do praise your name. And as we leave this place, we ask your guidance. Lord, we ask that you be gracious to us and lift your face upon us. Give us your countenance and help us to 